excited to have a great panel of folks today for the topic, Let's All Ride Together, Strategies to Get More Families Bicycling. Uh, my name is Kari Schlosshauer, and I'm a Regional Policy Manager in the Pacific Northwest for the Safe Routes to School National Partnership, Pacific Northwest being, for me, Portland, Oregon. So just a little bit about uh, the National Partnership. We are a nonprofit organization that improves the quality of life for kids and communities by promoting active, healthy lifestyles and safe infrastructure that supports bicycling and walking. Equity is at the forefront of our work, and we're very excited to have a great audience today uh, to talk about all this work. Before we get started, I just wanted to point out a couple of housekeeping items in GoToWebinar. So to the left, you should see the GoToWebinar viewer through which you'll see the presentation. On the right-hand side of your screen is the GoToWebinar control panel where you can raise your hand, ask questions, and select audio mode. Um, oftentimes, this control panel will collapse automatically when it's not in use. So just as FYI, um, if you want to keep it open, uh, you can click the View menu and uncheck Auto Hide Control. Uh, we've got two options for listening today, by telephone and by mic and speakers. If you have any sound problems with one selection, just go ahead and try the other option. And we'll do our best to field any issues. Just send us a chat message in the chat box. Now, even though you are all muted, um, we want to hear your input, of course. So please do go ahead and use the questions box to ask speaker questions, uh, asking the speakers questions for the Q&A portion of the webinar. And we'll do our best to answer everything um, as time allows at the end. We'll also include in this box um, important links to materials that the speakers are referencing um, or information to, to find out more later on. And I'm sure that after viewing today's presentation, you'll probably want to pop some popcorn and invite all your friends over this weekend to watch it again. If that's the case, you can do it for free by going to our website, clicking the resources header, and selecting webinars in the left-hand menu. And now for our speakers. Uh, we do have an excellent group here with us today. I'm very excited. Um, and I will be introducing them in turn as they come up to speak, but I wanted to provide an opportunity for you to, to put a face to the name. Uh, myself at the top, Nancy Buffum from the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition, Wafia Murray from the Philadelphia Bicycle Coalition, and Linda Ginnenthal from the Portland Bureau of Transportation. Um, I'm going to hand over the controls to Nancy first. And as that happens, I will read a little bit about, uh, about our friend Nancy. So Nancy Buffum is the Family and Schools Program Manager for the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition. She directs Safe Routes to School program outreach and school-based organizing, as well as all youth and family bicycle programs. The San Francisco Bicycle Coalition is a partner organization in San Francisco Safe Routes to School, working to make biking and walking to school safer, easier, and more fun for students and families. Safe Routes to School now serves 35 elementary schools, almost half in the San Francisco Unified School District. The San Francisco Bicycle Coalition teaches free family biking workshops and classes for all stages of family biking, from biking while pregnant to biking with your children for everyday transportation. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you very much. Um, hi, uh, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, what I would like to um, talk about today is the range of family biking classes that the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition offers with Safe Routes to School and with our other partners. Um, first, just a little bit about the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition in general. Um, we are um, one of the largest um, member-led uh, advocacy uh, bicycle coalitions in the country. 
Um, and our advocacy includes street campaigns for specific neighborhoods around San Francisco, the Vision Zero initiative to um, reduce and then finally eliminate uh, serious uh, crashes and fat fatal crashes in San Francisco. Um, we have Bike the Vote, and we work on regional policy um, in California. Um, our uh, members, are there are over 10,000 of us, and many are volunteers. We have an internship program. We do special events. We have a new uh, Women Bike SF program. Um, and in our bikes and business, we have a valet service. We work on bike parking throughout the city with the San Francisco MTA. Um, and we have business partnerships. Um, programs is actually um, just one component of what we do, and that includes bike education for adults, bike education for drivers, particularly large vehicle drivers, um, youth and family biking, and then bike builds. So what do parents need to get rolling? Infrastructure. The very first thing they need is they need a safe place to ride. And the second place thing they need is confidence. Um, in San Francisco, there are car-free areas where people can bike with their children in Golden Gate Park, um, along the beach, and um, several other places in parks. But um, the infrastructure work we do is keeping in mind that we want people who bike from 8 to 80. That's what we say. But we also include people on the backs of bikes. Um, so, uh, but in, with regard to the confidence feature, we urge parents to take our Introduction to Urban Bicycling class for adults, um, our Traffic Skills 101, which is a two-part program that includes um, a classroom and on-road, and also um, go on group rides before they uh, start riding in the street with their children. I don't know how many of you are familiar with San Francisco, although we have a lot of nice uh, uh, bike lanes, you see three different uh, uh, kinds of lanes here. Um, it is also very heavy traffic, um, even sometimes in residential neighborhoods. Um, so our first program is called Biking with Babies. And Biking with Babies is a class for uh, people who are pregnant or even intending to be pregnant, and people with children up to um, toddler age. In other words, people who you would carry on the back of your bike or the front of your bike, or a trailer, rather than um, have bike themselves in the street. Um, on the left, uh, you see a picture of uh, one of our teaching team, uh, Leah Hickey, who um, took the class when she was pregnant. She continued pr uh, biking until um, her third trimester. And um, on the right-hand side is just one of the um, uh, pictures of common things that happen when your children are riding with you. Um, we find that a really big part of what um, people with small children um, want to know is, what do I need to know? And so we tell them that first you need to um, ride without your baby. You need to um, test all your gear without your baby. You need to try your routes without your baby. And you need to think about how you um, uh, how you ride without your child. And I've had many, many parents talk to me about how the way that they ride is really different um, when they're carrying children. But it can be a conflict between couples. And what we frequently see is that there would be two uh, parents who will come to a class, one who is afraid to ride in the street, and the other one who is trying to get permission from their partner to ride in the street with their children. Um, so this is uh, just a little bit from the um, from what we uh, teach in that class. Um, we explain about uh, babies and helmets, and we add to the ABC quick check uh, dangling things and making sure that your child is secure. Um, and we show the options for uh, for children at the different ages and stages with as many different pictures of gear as we can. Um, 
we do emphasize uh, the, um, the long tail bikes and the electric assist. It's particularly important in San Francisco. And this technology has really taken off over the last few years. Um, you've probably seen it in your cities also. Um, but the, uh, the bikes that have the electric pedal assist are, um, are the big game changer um, in San Francisco. And they are becoming more and more common um, as people, even with children who are old enough to bike, are not old enough to bike to school in the street because of traffic um, and because of safety concerns. And parents prefer to have their children up on the bike with them rather than pulling them behind them on a, um, a, uh, a tailgate or a trail gator or, a, um, or even a, um, um, a trailer. Um, we also go over the basics that everybody needs to know for biking, um, uh, taking care of your equipment, uh, securing your equipment, um, you know, lighting options. Our uh, parent, the parent pair who are teachers um, own only bicycles. They have no car and they have built their own, some of their own bikes and they have two different kinds of family bikes and they're just an extraordinary resource. My children are uh, older. And um, so having uh, a parent-led class with myself just sort of as the facilitator is what we have found works the best. Um, the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition has the Family Biking Guide, which you can download for free um, in English, Spanish, and Chinese from our website. Just go to sfbike.org slash family, and you'll see this cover on there. And it is the how-to manual for all stages um, uh, emphasizing um, the beginners, the biking with your baby, biking while pregnant, um, getting your child to start riding, um, and then biking to school. Um, part of uh, Sunday Streets is our open streets program in San Francisco, and that's where we teach uh, our signature uh, class called Freedom from Training Wheels. And so um, we have a, uh, a bike teacher and then um, some of our volunteers and ambassadors um, teaching children how to ride without the training wheels because the best way to ride without, to learn to ride a bike is to never put the training wheels on. And we have added to that test ride a family bike and we have in our own fleet two bikes one Yuba and one um, extra cycle edge runner. And then um, our bicycle ambassadors will fre frequently bring their own long tail bikes for display so that uh, parents will be able to um, look at a variety of equipment. And um, we have a stand up curriculum where we basically we're just standing there in the street with a clipboard and um, our how to's and the same lecture that we give in the classroom. Um, but we're doing it as people walk up. And we have found that this interactive one-on-one -on -one or just three or four people standing around listening is um, the best way. And while the little children are um, practicing without the training wheels, the parents are trying the bikes or um, listening to our talk. Um, our on-road classes um, are, we have two kinds of classes. One of them is the skill building and learn to ride. Um, which we do in partnership uh, with um, Presidio YMCA uh, bike program called Y-Bike. Um, they do the actual teaching of children, uh, elementary school age children, how to ride. And the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition, uh, with me as the lead teacher, we teach what I call on road with your family, where really what I am doing is I'm teaching parents how to ride with their children. Um, the children learn how to ride. They uh, can ride in the park. They can ride in car-free spaces. But if they're going to ride in San Francisco on the road, then you need to have a class where the parents and the children together um, are learning how to ride. And so we will have um, exercises, uh, uh, parking lot drill, depending on where we are, or just a, a stand up and then um, running what we call a bike train in the neighborhood. Um, that is generally generally works best with just two or three families at a time. That's very uh, staff intensive, uh, but it is really the best way to teach people how to ride because unless you're having bike and roll to school week, if you have young children, um, a small bike train is better than a really big one. Um, our bike and roll to school week uh, now has 
80 to 90 schools from preschool to high school. And um, these are uh, organized school by school um, with the US San Francisco Bicycle Coalition providing the resource. We call it Bike and Roll to School Week because that gives each school the, um, the freedom to choose the day of the week that works best for them. And we found that there was an explosion in the number of schools that participated once we gave them permission to um, choose whatever day of the week they wanted. And many of the schools took the opportunity, um, as this preschool on the right-hand side did, to have other activities um, along with biking. And they might have one um, special day. They give away prizes, but they'll actually bike all week long. Um, another thing we do in partnership is um, we have uh, PE classes uh, with Presidio Y Bike, and we're doing a lot of advocacy to include PE in the school curriculum um, in San Francisco. I mean, it's a long haul, but we have a lot of allies within the San Francisco Unified School District, and we are hoping that we'll be able to put in um, a learn to ride at the elementary and, uh, and then a middle school PE as something that's a requirement. And then finally, um, as part of our advocacy, uh, we develop what we call family biking champions that really take the lead. And these people become leaders in their own, um, in their own schools, in their own neighborhoods. They become advocates who are willing to testify for bike lanes, um, are willing to organize bike to school, are willing to train other parents, are willing to serve as ambassadors. And that's about it. That's the, that's the full range of our programs. Um, the emphasizing the younger ages is um, what we have found um, to be the biggest place to make an impact because it's when parents um, like to ride, but now what are they going to do when they have kids? And, and the, providing that answer has, has helped a lot. And that's me. That's my program. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Nancy. That was really interesting. We're going to hold um, questions until the end. And so we will um, shift now over to Wafia, who comes to us from the other coast, from Philly. Um, Wafia Murray graduated from Temple University with a degree in psychology and a minor, a minor in religion. She worked with nonprofits throughout Philadelphia in the fields of college and career readiness before arriving at the Bicycle Coalition. A Philadelphian born and raised, she remembers how biking around the neighborhood with friends and walking to and from school as a child was often the highlight of her day because it gave her an opportunity to interact with peers and her community. As the Safe Routes Philly coordinator, she hopes to share that same enjoyment with the students she serves while exploring the city she loves by bicycle. And we're going to hear a little bit about how they do that. Take it away. Hi, hello everyone. Um, thank you for that introduction. Yes, my name is Wafia Murray. I coordinate the Safe Routes Philly program here at the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia. Um, just to give you a little bit of back, sorry. Just to give you a little bit of background, um, Safe Routes Philly. We work with schools throughout the city to help promote walking and biking as safe and healthy forms of transportation. Um, our work is supported by the City of Philadelphia Health Department and the National Highway Safety Administration Grant um, awarded by the Office of Transportation and Infrastructure Systems to do the work that we do. Um, we've been around since 2010 and we're now in our sixth year. So um, today we're here to talk about um, family biking. So I kind of want to start off with um, just speaking about the benefits of family biking and biking as a family. Um, for starters, it's an excellent activity to do uh, with your children um, all together. It's a great way to have quality time with the family. It gives um, parents and children and family members the time to bond as well as a fun form of exercise and an opportunity for um, everyone to kind of explore their community and area in a fun new way, to be outdoors. It's a great way to gain fitness, health, as well as um, incorporate um, different safety tips to be safe while you're on the road. And it's also a great form of just transportation for families to get around and run errands and all the other cool stuff. So um, a couple of ways that Safe Roots Philly has found that works really well to get kind of family and youth all biking together um, is one is a bicycle train. 
Um, so basically, a bicycle train, um, very similar to a walking school bus. It um, provides a way for children and families to get to school safe. Um, you have a group of adults biking to school together with a group of youth. That way, you know, that the youth get to school safe. And it's also really fun. And we also find that bicycle trains are a good way to help families bike together outside of school. Um, with one school, Meredith Elementary, they do bicycle trains every week, and they have loads of parents that come out, as well as staff that come out together to bike with their to bike with students. And it's really fun. Even though they do it once a month at the school, um, a lot of parents and families see how fun that that event is, and then they um, do fun biking activities as a family outside of school. So we found that that's a great way to kind of build up momentum for family biking. Another one is definitely critical mass. Critical mass is a great way for families to bike together. Um, critical mass is a nationwide movement, and it promotes um, family-friendly bike rides. Um, they also host a lot of fun bike rides for kids and families. Um, it's a great resource to not only bike with your family and friends, but they also give good instructions on how to bike with your um, kids safely. Um, we partner with the Right to the Coalition and Safety School. We partner with Kittle Mass a lot on a series of rides and workshops and parent meetups. And this is a great way to, you know, ride together as a family. Um, so now I want to kind of talk about a really awesome family ride that we did with Safe Food Philly last summer. Um, it was really great. So we did a family ride with the summer camp, um, McDaniel Summer Camp here in South Philadelphia. And Basically, the way that started is the summer camp reached out to Safety Philly about um, doing some biking and safety encouragement and workshops with their youth this summer. And so that was great, but what worked out even well is that the summer camp was very close to um, Indigo, which is the bike share system here in Philadelphia. And that allowed for Safety Philly to collaborate with Indigo on um, walking, I'm on biking, um, safety, and encouragement workshops with not just the children there, but also the parents and the staff. Um, so we kind of broke it up into three different parts, like a three-part workshop, and I'll get to that later. But the first thing that we did was we attended the summer camp kickoff event. So that was the time where all of the students who were a part of the summer camp, as well as their family members, came to kind of learn about the summer camp, meet everyone, and learn about the things that the youth will be doing in the summer camp during that kickoff event. Um, Safe and Philly, as well as in the gold table at the event, um, we offer information about about bike share, um, we offered test rides and things like that, and it was a great way for the community to learn about, you know, and to go on what safety school is going with the summer camp, um, as well as kind of, you know, letting them know that their kids will be learning about bike safety, and if you know they're interested, that you know they can come along and ride it too, and helping them feel comfortable and kind of a. Um, we also let them know that we wanted to plan like a family ride at the end, so it was kind of a way to help them feel comfortable and kind of build momentum towards that ride at the end. So the first thing we did was we did a bike safety lesson with the students. Um, basically, you know, going over some of the important things about biking, that what we call um, the Bs of um, biking safely, being predictable, being visible, and being responsible. Um, we went over proper helmet fitting, um, the ABCs of biking, you know, things like to check before you bike, check the air in your tires, check your brakes, um, and check your chain. Uh, as well as, you know, proper clothing to wear, to be visible when you're biking, reflective clothing, as well as the proper hand signal. So we want to make sure that, you know, we're taking the students out for a ride, that they know, you know, the proper way to be safe during their ride. And after each workshop and each activity, we gave them information to take home to their parents as well. So that way, you know, the parents were able to get tips on, that way the parents were all able to learn with the youth for learning, as well as receive tips for them for the family ride, and it also helped kind of gain momentum again for the family ride at the end, um, which was really helpful and really great. Um, the next thing we did was we came in and we did a bike rodeo. And basically, a bike rodeo is um, like a bike safety obstacle course, and it teaches, you know, different bicycle skills from each station. There's stations on proper hand signaling, stations on maneuvering, um, scanning while you're biking. So this was really something you really love this. It just gave them a chance to actually get on the bikes and see how fun it is. Um, and then again, after that, we gave them information to take home to their families, to talk about it. So everything we did, we made sure that the youth were able to take a portion of what they learned back home to, you know, talk to their parents about it, talk to their family members about it, all while kind of gaining that momentum of biking. 
as a family type of event, um, which was great. And then after that, it came the actual family ride. So we were really happy about this because we were nervous that, you know, uh, even though we were working with the youth, we weren't sure about how many parents or, you know, staff would come out. But we had a lot of parents come out to that event. And I think it really spoke to the fact that I um, always say that sometimes youth can be a bigger influence on adults than sometimes adults can be on youth. So I think that, and all of the parents were saying that, we were excited to come. You know, every week our kids were coming home saying how much they learned about safe biking and how fun it was. And so they were like, you know, we really want to come and, you know, uh, be a part of it as well. So we read a, led a really awesome group ride from the summer camp in South Philly to uh, the Schuylkill River Trail. It was about four mile ride there and a four mile ride back. It was um, really great. It was really great to collaborate with Indigo because we were able to provide bikes for the adults, parents, and staff who wanted to participate in the ride but did not have a bike. Because that's often what we find sometimes is a lot of adults that want to do our bicycle trains, want to be a part of our rides, but they don't necessarily have a bike. So the goal was able to let us loan bikes for the ride so all of the parents were able to ride that. And it was able to show the parents that you know, if you don't have a bike at home, you know, you can always rent one of these indigo bikes and kind of do a family biking event as well. Um, so after the event, we put out a blog post on our site. We always like to blog and about cool events that we have because it's a way to spread the word of what we're doing to other organizations, other programs, um, and it was a way for, you know, the parents to share what they learned and the summer camp to share what they learned um, and to kind of build momentum for future family rides as well. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of it. That's the ride that we led, and that's kind of how it worked out. Um, if you have any other questions about the family ride or about Safe in Philly, you can go visit our website, safeinphilly.org, and you can also send me a question if you have it. Um, again, my name is Marcia Murray, and I coordinate the Safe in Philly program here at the Bicycle Coalition, and this is my email address below. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wafia. That was excellent and really exciting to see that pairing with um, the bike share. Uh, I'm super excited to, to say that we're getting our bike share in Portland um, this summer, and so you know maybe there's some great lessons in there for what we can also do. Our next speaker um, is also coming from the Portland Bureau of Transportation, Linda Ginnenthal. Uh, comes to transportation as a consumer first and a transportation professional second. She has grown up in New York City without access to a car. She relied on the rich and varied options in her hometown and in her adopted cities, Washington, D.C., and in Portland, Oregon, for getting around. Currently, Linda is the City of Portland Programs Manager for the Active Transportation and Safety Division. Linda is the architect of our Portland Sunday Parkways, which began in 2008 and is the current program director for these five wildly popular events held monthly in May through September. She currently also co-chairs the 2016 International Open Street Summit, which is scheduled to happen in Portland this August, August 18th to 21st, and we're going to hear more. Thanks. Well, thanks for um, that introduction. That was very nice. Uh, again, my name is Linda Ginnenthal, and uh, I have been working with the city of Portland for uh, just over 20 years, so I've been around the block for a little while. Um, our Active Transportation and Safety Division works on a whole variety of programs, and our charge is to, a part of our charge is to encourage people to bike and walk and take transit and carpool and car share, pretty much anything other than driving alone. Uh, and we have a plethora of programs that we do. We have a Safe Routes to School program that works all year long, Vision Zero program. We have a Smart Trips to School, which is an individualized marketing program. Um, what I'm going to focus on is our Sunday Parkways to look at ways in which we uh, work with families and uh, get kids on bikes. So, um, uh, so let's begin. So for those who aren't sure exactly where Portland is, we're sort of between, somewhere between San Francisco and Seattle, up in the northwest. It's a little damp. Um, generally, uh, except during the summer. It's our, that's our secret. Uh, the population is about 600,000. We're one of the fastest growing cities in the United States. And people who are moving uh, to Portland, they are 
wildly hungry to get around without having to drive everywhere. It's uh, borne out in our data. And uh, they moved to Portland to live a car-free or car-light lifestyle. And Sunday Parkways is one of the ways that we address this demand for more biking and uh, more livable streets. So uh, as uh, uh, Kari said, Portland Sunday Parkways, uh, we, what, what it is is we close streets to motor vehicles and we open them up for people to bike and walk and roll in the middle of the street. Uh, we anchor it with four or five parks or marketplaces along the way so people can stop and play. Uh, we have food vendors there. Um, there's co community organizations that they connect with. Um, it's a bicycling event, but it's much more than just a bike ride on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, so my presentation is going to focus on the parts of Sunday Parkways that entice families and children to, to get on their bicycles. Um, it's one of my favorite pictures. We, we, we put out a ladder and had people take shots from here. It was super fun. So. Um, so Sunday Parkways is all about joy. It is not about lessons or teaching. It is really about experiencing freedom and family. And um, like the rest of the presentations that we've seen, um, you know, when you work with children on bikes, you know, every picture is like the adorable show. Uh, so, <laughs> so there's lots of wonderful, happy children uh, uh, in our presentations. Um, and so, so the, the program itself uh, is five each summer. We started with one the first year uh, and then grew to five. One, uh, the first one was this, uh, it starts in May. Each, each route is, has been anywhere from six, uh, six to nine miles. And if there's no start, no finish, which means any time from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., you can hop onto the route uh, anywhere you want, hop off the route any time you want. So it's a very open, freeing um, experience for families to get out and, and ride their bikes. And, um, the, the, and they do. Uh, there's, uh, I mean, this is one of my favorite shots. Um, you sort of get as many kids out there as possible experiencing the streets in a whole new way. The, um, uh, the uh, one of my favorite stories um, that uh, in watching families ride their bikes together is um, I was. Um, I just sort of rolling along during the, one of the events with a big smile on my face. And there was this uh, family that was uh, I'm riding next to. And um, the little boy is working really hard at, at riding his bike. And um, uh, at the, at the st we, we stopped at a signal and uh, you know, waited for the police to let us through. And we got through the intersection. And then uh, we came up to the next block. And he slowed down. And the family stopped. And I overheard him t asking his, his folks, so now can I ride my bike to school? And they said, yes, it was really perfect. So, so Sunday Parkways offers a practice run for kids who can earn their freedom to ride a bike and to be independent and feel competent um, and to have some just good old fun. It's more about convincing the parents that their kids are ready to do it than it is about um, the kids wanting to do it or convincing them that it's a fun thing to do. So, so how did so how did I get to how did we get to do this in our, our city? So, um, everything we do at Sunday Parkways is geared towards reaching audiences to bicycling. Um, and in Portland, we've done a pretty good job of getting um, mammals to ride, the middle-aged men in Lycra, those you know, 25 to 40-year-old healthy Portlanders and uh, people moving to Portland uh, to ride for transportation. We've, you know, we've done a really good job of getting those folks. 7.2% uh, of our commuters go by bike in Portland. Um, and this is the highest percentage of any uh, large cities in the US. Um, where the national average is something like 0.5%. It's growing, but it's still pretty low. Um, and about 43% of our, our children are biking and walking or rolling to school. So we've done a good job of getting the low-hanging fruit to get on their bicycles and getting kids on their bicycles. So our target audience for 
uh, for many of our programs, and in particular for Sunday Parkways, is getting women, people of color, immigrants and refugees, low-income families, and older adults um, out to ride. Uh, so, how, so how do we engage folks who don't yet bike for transportation to get out, go ahead and do it? Um, you know, we 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 show them. We show them where to go. Um, so the goal is to show off for, on Sunday Parkways the neighborhood greenways, the system that we've built, which specifically uh, built for our target audiences. Um, we want folks to experience Sunday Parkways every day. So the routes are located on uh, these low traffic streets that uh, are uh, have those share rows on them that show people where is a great place to ride every day. We are not on the major streets or business corridors, uh, which are the streets noted in gray. Um, these are just not great places to ride with your kids um, or if you're new or a timid rider. And so um, it doesn't do us any good um, to, to show off places that aren't great to ride with your families on a regular basis. Um, now, other cities do Sunday Parkways or Open Streets events on iconic streets, and that's fantastic. But the goal is different. It's to raise visibility. This is, a, this is geared towards getting, showing people where they can ride every day. And they do. Um, we had last year 119,000 participants in the five events. Uh, on the 37 and a half miles of traffic-free streets. So that's an average of our smallest event last year was 16,000 and our largest event was 31,000, uh, which is um, one of the reasons why they're nine miles. We just, we had too much bike congestion. Um, so, uh, and the program is free and it's a fun event for the whole family. Um, whether or not the kid is actually riding their bike or they're uh, riding with their families, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great fun event and it's it's something that you can do with all ages and so that sort of uh, a kind of a critically important piece of this um, parents feel safe allowing their kids to ride in the street and you know you could just see the kids on the route just relax you know kids when they're riding in the streets or riding with their parents they tend to be a really tense um, and when they're zooming around on Sunday Parkways, it's just this open freedom. Um, it, it also means for the other riders that they have to keep their head up because you kind of bump into <laughs> you bump into the kids. Otherwise, uh, I mean that's the most quote unquote dangerous thing about Sunday Parkways is the is the weaving kids. But um, it uh, it's just very freeing for the family to be able to ride together and relax. Um, and then we also offer. Um, programming with kids. So this is, uh, there's a, uh, an adult women's bike troupe, dance troupe um, called the Sprockettes. And these are the girls' um, part of doing that. So uh, they do a performance at Sunday Parkways. And that's, that's uh, super fun for a way for them to get involved in not just writing but creating the program at Sunday Parkways. And then we have volunteers. We uh, Last year one of our events was on Father's Day and so we had uh, fathers and sons, fathers and daughters out volunteering at the intersections together. So you know m helping make the program run uh, and we tried to pre create as many uh, opportunities for that to, to happen. And then um, we try to find as many ways uh, for kids to get off their bikes and to discover that riding your bike can get you to cool and fun destinations. So um, in addition to sort of standing in the middle of the street, getting misted on by a mist, uh, you can also play in the parks uh, if you can ride your bike there. Um, and so uh, equity is front and center in this program. Uh, this is uh, a picture of from our uh, bilingual bike fair. Um, it actually really wasn't all that bilingual. Uh, we most of the the participants that uh, participated in this were Spanish speaking uh, uh, families, and uh, so uh, th that was wildly successful with many, many families coming out to enjoy that um, bilingual bike fair. And uh, we also had the Latino Network organize a family bike ride, uh, super fun, all organized by the community itself. Um, so that was really swell. 
uh, we in, we get the Safe Routes to School program to also participate in specifically in the May event. Uh, the area that we choose for our Sunday Parkways for that month is um, a concentrate uh, the area of town where there are the most number of children who live, and it's the closest to the most number of schools. So we do a backpack flyer uh, that you can't really see it here, but there's. Um, the information is in a variety of different languages that, uh, that the uh, eight area elementary and middle schools can, um, th th the parents speak those languages, so English, Spanish, Vietnamese, Russian, Chinese, Somali, um, all can get the information about coming out and enjoying enjoying the day. Uh, so we in incorporate our uh, Safe Routes to School program. So, so um, I wanted to pitch our International Open Street Summit, uh, August 18th through the 21st of this year. Uh, we are hosting um, the Open Street Summit uh, here in Portland. It will be a gathering of people who are organizing Open Streets events or Sunday Parkways events throughout the country, as well as we'll have folks up from South Africa, folks from uh, Canada, uh, and other places around the world who will talk about how to both create um, create a Sunday Parkways or an Open Streets event in the community and talk about the value and how to get your uh, community to adopt them and to, uh, to run them uh, and why it's important both from the, uh, the health perspective from an active transportation perspective and something that's great for the city. So um, I'm hoping um, that uh, you could all come to Portland. Uh, the last day of the conference is uh, Sunday Parkways uh, in Southeast, and so that will be part of the of the program. It's uh, a, you know just a great place to um, learn about uh, ways to get uh, families in and, and uh, getting to ride. So um, thank you. And uh, that's my contact information. Uh, if you have questions, we can open it up about now. Is that correct? That is thank you so much, Linda. Um, I am going to pop this back up. Um, hang on one sec. It's getting going. Um, yeah, thank you so much for everyone. Um, for great presentations and information. I wanted to share uh, that there was a lot of love for the MAMMAL acronym, which <laughs> is absolutely um, a giggle-worthy uh, acronym for middle-aged men in Lycra. Um, that's one of my favorites also. <laughs> there, were, there were a lot of folks saying, oh my gosh, I've never heard that before. That's great. Oh, I love it. Um, so I, we, we've got a bunch of great questions, and um, I will be uh, just going through them real quick and, and sort of tossing them back out to the presenters who all should be unmuted at this point and can answer. Um, the first one, I'm going to, to go back to Linda. Um, there were a number of questions about um, Sunday Parkways, and I think one that is really a good one to start with is, where does the financial support come from for Sunday Parkways? Always a, always a good question. The It's a variety of um, of money that we get. Primarily it's supported by the community. So about a third of the money is city money. So that's our um, general fund support, which is not transportation money. And um, that's about a, a hundred thousand. And we have another 60,000 that comes out of the transportation funds. The rest um, uh, it's just under 500,000. So it's about it's about 95,000 per event, uh, and that includes absolutely everything, including staff time, police, um, barricades, volunteer program, porta potties, dumpsters, everything. Uh, and that uh, money, most of it is sponsorship. Kaiser Permanente, it, which is a health provider here in Portland as well as insurance, they are our title, uh, our presenting sponsor, and they give 100,000 each year uh, to Sunday Parkways. We, the rest is individual sponsorships. We do a small individual fundraising where we have, we raise about 20 to 25,000 in individual 
uh, donations. We have vendor fees that raise about $38,000, and that sort of fills out our dance card. So it's, it's uh, you know, I do a lot of dialing for dollars. But we do have some great businesses that want to get on board with the kind of positive, uh, and it's taken, a, it's taken a few years for us to build up a, uh, the sponsorship. Um, but you know, with this, with the kind of positive messaging, I mean, you know, it's all kids and love and joy, and so it's it's not as difficult a sell to the businesses. They also get really great exposure um, on a positive program, and we also have a very robust social media that the kids just love and families love. So we have about ten thousand people on our Facebook page, so they get some of that love as well. Right. Thank you. Um, somewhat related to Open Streets, but also going back to Afia's uh, mention of the Kitticle Mass Rides, we got a question um, from someone in Milwaukee uh, saying that people rarely go um, to other neighborhoods. They're essentially sort of contained within their own neighborhoods. And if you had any strategies or, or tips um, about, you know, especially with family biking, to encourage others, to encourage people to visit other neighborhoods and to, to sort of break out of that box. Uh, I'll answer for San Francisco. Um, our, uh, what we call Sunday Streets um, is, uh, takes place over a period of months um, like Portland, but it's in neighborhood by neighborhood. And um, I have met um, at so many different bike fairs uh, families that one of the features of our booth, the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition booth, is um, the map of where all everything else is. And people really want to know, how do I bike to that other free bike open bikeway? And um, we spend a lot of time talking about routes. Whenever we have um, any kind of class or any type, kind of um, outreach booth uh, for the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition, um, helping people strategize um, about how to get places. Um, yeah. It is really true that uh, people, first they're interested in their own neighborhood, but once they gain some confidence, they, they want to see the city, and that's what we want them to do. Nice. So this is Linda. For our Sunday Parkways, we, we have groupies that come to, you know, all over the city. Uh, we have five different events in five different areas of, of town. So we have groupies that go to different ones. I mean, primarily I'm not that concerned with them going to a different neighborhood. Um, the, uh, again, our goal is to get people to ride to their, to their destinations that they want to go to uh, each and every day. You know, we show off the parks that are close by that they can ride to with their families. So, um, but uh, all of our um, promotions have uh, what we call our access map, which shows all the bus routes and bikeways uh, with the route overlaid on top of that. And then just generally provide, we have a series of, we have a citywide bike map, which is sort of a good commuter map. It's got the, you know, the general routes. But we, we produce five uh, neighborhood uh, bike and walk maps, which are m much more finer grain that show the low traffic, many more of the low traffic streets and many more of the kid-friendly destinations. So the libraries, the community centers, the schools, um, you know, that uh, heritage trees, the so things that families would want to go visit and they can look at that neighborhood map and do something that's a little bit more manageable using that as a wayfinding um, tool. Right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. A question for Nancy. Um, you mentioned that your program is for people ages 8 to 80, and there's a question about what about younger children, especially kids aged around three to seven who can ride on their own? Um, do you have any ideas or resources or suggestions there? Well, our, the eight to 80 is, in San Francisco, that's really the, um, the ages that we want people to be able to ride in the street. Um, in a, a tightly um, packed urban area like San Francisco, um, we recommend that uh, 
children, even when they're riding with their parents, stay on the sidewalk um, until they're at least eight years old. And uh, the law in San Francisco is that you can ride on the sidewalk until you're 13. But we also um, do have uh, uh, something that was passed by every agency in San Francisco a couple of years ago that was called the Children's Outdoor Bill of Rights. And the Children's Outdoor Bill of Rights includes the right to ride a bicycle. And so we promote um, as much as possible with the Recreation and Parks Department and with other agencies um, the places that children can ride car free. And so that includes our Sunday Streets program. It includes um, the off-road paths. And we also have a new program in San Francisco called Shared Schoolyard, where um, it's uh, sponsored and supported by public money that schoolyards in every neighborhood all over San Francisco are open um, every Saturday and Sunday from 9 to 4 so that children can practice and learn to ride with their families, even if they're very young. Um, off uh, off the street. Um, as far as um, riding, uh, at riding in the street, um, I mentioned the bike trains. And um, on a special Safe Routes to School bike uh, train um, on a special green commute day, then a group will do the same thing that what Wafia was talking about in Philly, where they'll ride in a group together. Um, but we. Uh, very heavily promote learning to ride in all of the different alternative places to riding in the street for the younger children. Nice. I really like the idea of the outdoor bill of rights. That's, that's really interesting. Um, thank you. So another question. Uh, this one is for Wafia. Um, bike share can get a little pricey if you take it out for a long period of time in most systems. Um, were you able to partner with the bike share company um, to provide the bikes without cost to the families, or how did you set that up? Yes, we were, um, when we collaborated with Bike Share on our ride, um, we were able to provide the bikes um, for free during those rides before. Because, yeah, we took a four mile ride there and back, so it took a couple of hours, but um, Bike Share was able, the Bike Share um, the system was able to um, provide those bikes free of cost during that ride. Nice, thank you. Um, and then uh, sort of a follow-up question also for that one. Were you uh, where do you get the helmets for the adults that were using yes. the bike share? Yes. So also um, with the um, Indigo Bike Share team, they um, have they have helmets that they provide for when they do group ride because they do group ride like all the time year round in different communities and areas around bike share. So they were able to provide helmets for the adults to come on their ride as well. So it's really been a great partnership. And we've even like that was the first real big ride that we did last summer. And even since then, we've been able to continue partnering them with partnering with them through Safe Routes for with um, bike clubs at schools, even with high school students and other rides and things like that. So I would um, consider, you know, people that have bike share systems in their city trying to figure out ways to collaborate the same way as well. It's really been beneficial for us in our Safe Routes to School program here in Philadelphia. Nice. Yeah, I think that's a great model for a lot of cities that are having or getting bike share soon. Um, so we've got time for a couple more questions. I wanted to jump back to the open streets conversation. We got a question, in one city we tried to close a street on a Sunday and got major pushback from the police department. What advice do you have to convince city officials that closing a street for a little bit on a Sunday is easy and completely reasonable? Well, we actually, um, this is Linda, the, it's a conundrum because um, oftentimes the police are overwhelmed with uh, the number of events that go on. And so um, some of it is a staffing issue. Um, I mean, they close streets for every other event. I mean, there's like marathons, there's parades, there's all kinds of runs and walk, you know walks and stuff like that. So these are not, it's not an unusual activity to have people doing things in the streets. And so going through some kind of normalized permitting process with your city um, is kind of the way to, to take a look at it. I mean, they, this should be treated no differently than any other, other event uh, that gets organized 
um, that is to, for the benefit of you know free for the benefit of the the uh, citizenry. The other tack that I have seen taken is that um, it's sort of a free speech thing where you uh, you know as a nonprofit organization um, you, you know our parades and things like that uh, our our protests and things like that get permits to be in the street and um, so uh, you, you know sort of going through that I mean that's not the ideal tack but there's there's a whole I mean there's there's all this precedent for doing it um, and then just Figure out what is the what is their issue. Is it a staffing issue? Is it a money issue? Um, we actually don't have the police at all at our events anymore. Um, we use certified traffic flaggers to m manage the traffic, and we haven't had it, it, we haven't had any problems. So um, you know, sort of working through what is their issue and how how can you address it. Great, thank you. Uh, so it looks like that's all the time we have for questions. And um, I wanted to th again thank all of our panelists and everyone who has joined um, the presentation today. I think it was really rich and, and informative. Um, I also wanted to just uh, remind folks that uh, we will have this webinar posted online on our website within 48 hours at saferoutspartnership.org. Um, we will also be sending you a very quick survey and would love to hear your feedback on today's webinar. We're always trying to make things better and better. And we look forward to seeing you next time at the next webinar. And thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thanks so much.